Hey guys, now I know it's been quite a long time since I did a video talking about Amiga OS 4. Uh, I think my last one was in something like 2012, maybe even 2011. Uh, today though I thought we'd have a look at the current version of it, Amiga OS 4.1 Final Edition. And as you can see I've actually got two copies of it here. I'll explain why in just a moment. Uh, but the reason that I haven't done any videos talking about Amiga OS 4 is quite simple. <laughs> I haven't been using it for a few years. Now, it's nothing all to do with the operating system. The reason is a machine that I'm running it on is an Amiga One XE, which was you know, really meant to be a developer's board. And over the years, it became really flaky. And it got to the stage a few years ago where I'd spent you know weeks and weeks, I'd spent hundreds of pounds trying to get it running properly. And I was getting stuff like random lockups, like you know, it'd boot up, it'd be operational for five seconds and the whole machine would lock up, or it might work for two hours and lock up randomly. In the end, I got hacked off and it just, you know, unplugged it and it's been gathering dust under my table ever since. Although recently I've been having a bit of a clear out of my office and swapping a few things around. Looked at that machine and I thought, right, you know, either I get rid of it, cut my losses, uh, or I try and spend a bit of time and effort in getting it going again. So the first step was buying the latest version of Amiga OS 4.1. Now, this was actually released about six months ago in January of this year, and it is the first paid update to Amiga OS 4.1. Uh, now, I think the original came out back in, I think it's 2008, 2009. I did a video on that years ago when it first came out. Uh, this is not really a massive upgrade. Really what it is, you know, if you want to be honest about it, it's Amiga OS 4.1.7. You know, it's a very small upgrade. But it is the first update to Amiga OS 4.1 that they've charged for. Now, they've released it in a physical box and everything. And I can kind of go through some of the... Uh, the updates that they've made to it, which as I mentioned are not you know massive things, it's stuff like uh, extended memory functionality, so if you've got more than two gigabytes that will work now, which doesn't really affect my machine. Uh, a new powerful console, new, new intuition features, new workbench features, doesn't really go much more into that. Much improved DOS, new unified graphics library, updated Python, uh, installation graphics, new icons and backdrops, and countless minor updates and bug fixes. So as you can see it is really you know a, a minor you know point one update really but a few people have speculated the reason they released this is you know they haven't earned any money off OS4 for a good five years and it's pretty cheap I think you know I think it was like 21 pounds something like 25 euros you can buy it for so it doesn't cost a lot really obviously the most expensive thing about running OS4 is the hardware that I'll talk more about in just a moment now I'm not going to go into the whole history of Amiga OS if you want to find out a bit more I'll leave some links in the video description as I don't want this video to drag on for hours and hours. But basically I've got two separate versions of it here. Now I've got Amiga OS 4.1, which I will install on my uh, Amiga One XE machine. And I've got this here, which is Amiga OS 4.1 Classic. Now this version is really intended for uh, old school Commodore Amigas that have got PowerPC upgrade accelerators. But recently there have been some big strides in the emulation world. Uh, WinUAE, the Amiga emulator for Windows, now does actually support PowerPC. So it is possible to run the classic version of Amiga OS 4.1 on a Windows PC running WinUAE. So today I'm just going to focus on setting it up on my uh, A1XE, but I will do a video in the future showing you the, the classic version as well. Now, since this got released in January, there have been quite a few things that have happened in the, the world of OS 4. Uh, for a start, the, the team behind this, Hyperion Entertainment, actually went bankrupt or were declared bankrupt about four weeks after this came out. Now they were declared bankrupt by the Belgian courts if I remember correctly. Since then it has been turned over and I believe they're now restructuring the company so they're expecting that you know things will get back to normal and uh, despite the name 4.1 final edition uh, apparently it doesn't mean it's going to be the final ever version of Amiga OS 4. It just means it will be the last update to, um, to 4.1 and then the team are going to work towards Amiga OS 4.2 at some point in you know the coming years. So that's kind of the you know the preamble and the background of it. So what I'm going to do now, we'll do a little unboxing if you're interested in seeing what the packaging looks like and inside. Then I'm going to try and get my Amiga One XE going and we'll try and get this installed. So here we have the two different editions of Amiga OS 4.1. We've got the one for Classic for the Commodore Amiga and the, the one for the PowerPC. Amiga One machine there. Now interestingly these both come in standard DVD cases, although when it first came out back in January someone on the Amiga Facebook group did tell me that it came in a a tin box. Kind of like um, Drive Club for the PS4 here. So you know, as you can see it comes in like metal. So I'm not exactly sure why 
mine's come in a standard DVD case. Uh, either that or somebody was just, you know, telling me porkies on Facebook, which wouldn't surprise me all that much. But yeah, anyway, as you can see, you know, they look identical here apart from the logos. Although this one was shrink wrapped and this one wasn't, I think the reason for that is that Amiga Kit, who I bought these off, probably had to open the final edition for Classic to put this floppy disk in. As uh, if you are installing it on a Commodore Amiga, you do get this boot disk with it, which is not needed for the uh, the Amiga 1 machine. So we come with the uh, you know the, the floppy disk here, which has got a nice glossy label on. There is also a, uh, a sticker included too. Maybe you want to stick that on the, the case of your machine, I guess. Uh, we have a boot guide here as well, which is, you know, professionally printed, nice glossy manual. Uh, with you know instructions on installation in there too and I think my serial codes on the back so I won't show that uh, and then we've got the the CD-ROM with the actual operating system itself on so uh, you know it's, it's a properly printed disc and everything not just a you know a CDR so you know it's presented quite well I think actually and I imagine that the the Amiga 1 version won't be all that much different now we've got the, the boot guide there and the sticker again. No floppy disk with this version and the, the CD there too. And that's all there is to it really. I mean, you know, you're looking at a DVD case and a CD-ROM. <laughs> Not the most exciting thing to look at in the world. But it is, you know, nice and professionally polished. It looks like, you know, professional product given the resources that they've got. I'm pretty impressed with it. So let's crack on with the installation and see if we can get it up and running. So here is my Amiga One XE up on the table. Now, I did do a video on this uh, case and everything back in around 2009 when I was uh, a lot younger and a bit slimmer. If you look back on my uh, YouTube history, I'm sure you'll find it. Uh, however, I thought I'd give you a nice HD look at it now that I've got a 1080p camera these days. So the case is actually off a uh, company that were around uh, for a few years called Commodore Gaming. And they did actually produce these rather nice, rather slick looking PC gaming cases with the uh, Commodore chicken head logo on. And you've got these fans in the side here as well. Uh, I've also put a little Amiga badge on the front there that you might be able to see. And uh, I've actually got my Amiga One XE motherboard inside there. Now there is a few things that I'm going to have to do first because I know that the, uh, the CMOS battery in these machines, if you don't have a power source connected, it generally dies within a few weeks. Never mind, like, whatever it's been, like, you know, 18 months to two years since I last turned this machine on. So uh, I'm going to replace that. And also, Amiga OS 4.1 Final Edition um, doesn't let you do an upgrade install from what I've read. So I've got a spare hard disk in here that I will kind of repurpose and will install it on that. Then I'll copy all my files back onto it. I've just quickly gone hands-free with the camera as I thought you might not enjoy the sight of me bent over trying to undo the case for five minutes. Uh, although you might enjoy the sight of the innards of this machine even less. Will you look at that? What a mess. So I thought I'd show you quickly inside the case of my Amiga One XE. Um, as you can see, cable management wasn't really my strong point back then. I can assure you that the uh, insides of my modern Core i7 PC uh, do not look like that. So on the side of this Commodore case, we've got a very big cooling fan, which is, you know, it's a nice large fan, pretty silent in operation as well, if I remember rightly. Uh, and also we've got another PCI um, bracket mounted CPU fan there too. Now behind it, if we look through this massive mess of cables, we've got the Amiga One XE motherboard from iTech. Now I think it came out in around 2002 to 2005 they were made. I had mine, you know, about a decade or more. And if you look on that little daughter board there, that's actually the uh, the CPU with a, uh, a very puny heat sink on top. Now that is a uh, PowerPC G4 uh, IBM chip there. And it's uh, like most PowerPC chips, it runs very, very hot. Hence the extra cooling is needed, particularly as mine's actually overclocked from uh, 800 to 933. Um, I think I have actually clocked it back down to 800 though when I was trying to... Um, sort out all the problems I was having, which didn't help, unfortunately. So I've got the extra cooling there, as I have heard reports of these machines basically, you know, frying themselves to death. And I did mention that these boards were kind of plagued with quite a lot of problems. And the reason is, even though it's branded as an iTech Amiga One XE, these were PowerPC development boards that really, they were just evaluation hardware, really. Uh, iTech, who sold them, back in the early part of the last decade were a little bit naughty really in selling these as finished products to home users. End users really should never have got their hands on this kind of, you know, early 
development hardware really. Now there were some uh, problems with the chipset on here, I think it was the Articia S I think it was called, I'm a bit rusty on this, but it had um, a very buggy Northbridge chip that affected onboard DMA. So what that means is, as you can see there, I've got a PCI uh, IDE card there because the onboard IDE is basically buggy as hell. Uh, so you need to replace that. Onboard USB, I remember, was totally broken as well. You needed to basically solder in some new components to get that working stably. So I found it easier just to get a USB 2.0 card and put that in a PCI slot. Uh, onboard audio works on some but not others, and apparently it's quite bad quality as well. So we've got a, uh, a PCI sound card in there too. Um, and I don't think there is actually... There might be some onboard, onboard graphics actually. Um, but either way, I've got a... Radio 9250, I think that card is there, uh, to replace the onboard um, video. So basically anything that, you know, came on the motherboard apart from the the CPU really has been replaced with PCI cards, which you think would make it run stable, but unfortunately last time I tried it, it didn't. So uh, we've got a CD-ROM there and two hard disks now. I think that one had the operating system on and that was basically just a, it was a new drive actually, uh, only basically formatted and was a scratch disk really so what I should be able to do is install Amiga OS 4.1 final edition on that drive and then just copy my data from that one as bizarrely for some reason um, Amiga OS 4.1 final edition you can't do an upgrade install it's got to be a fresh install but you know as I said this machine was hideously unstable last time I tried it so uh, what I'm going to do is first of all get the hardware ready so there is a a standard uh, 232 coin cell battery in there somewhere <laughs> underneath that nest of cables might be down there at the bottom so yeah you can see it through the through the wires there so what I'm gonna do is first of all replace that because I know that battery will be dead uh, then I'm gonna try and sort these cables out a bit and swap the hard disks around and then we'll have a go at installing Amiga OS 4.1 final edition and as you can see, we have life out of the machine. As I suspected, all I needed to do was replace the um, 2032 with a new battery and then the machine will load. Now, unfortunately, the screen mode that the system boots into is not supported by my capture card. So what we're gonna have to do is just basically record the screen with the camera at the moment. And then as soon as I've ran through the installer, I'll uh, hopefully be able to capture it on my um, on my capture card and show you around the, the OS quickly on that. So we're booting from the CD at the moment. I've um, swapped the hard disks around so we should have a, I think it's a 160 gigabyte hard disk that we can partition and install uh, Amiga OS 4.1 Final Edition on. Now as I mentioned, the last time I had this machine on it was having lots of stability issues. So I'm hoping that installing this new um, version of Amiga OS, and obviously with it being a clean install, it might make the system run uh, a bit more reliably. So uh, let's have a little look how we get on here. Um, most of my data, my next generation Amiga use these days has been transferred over to MorphOS. I run on a PowerPC G5 day to day. So it will kind of be cool to get OS 4 up and running again though. And uh, you know, a bit nostalgic as I've not used it for a couple of years. Be nice to see what's, what's new in that community. So here we have the um, 4.1 final edition boot screen. So all going well so far. Now you'll have to remember that we're booting from a CD-ROM here, so the speeds are not going to be all that quick. If I need to do a little phantom edit here and there, I will do. And uh, yeah, we have a new installer here. Now this looks um, a lot slicker than it used to. We've got the boing balls there, and uh, I should be able to drag the screen, yeah, in true Amiga style. So the first option here, we can set the location and key map of your computer and have the CD boot up in the language of your choice. Uh, not really too fussed about the CD booting up. Um, start the hard disk preparation utility and prepare the hard disks. That's what we want. Um, yep, yeah, that's my IDE card. So, um, yeah, that's the CD-ROM there. And there is the uh, the Western Digital new hard disk that I've got here. So, we shall press install. No bootloader installed. Now, if I remember correctly, you do have to install a bootloader, so we'll do that. Uh, where would that be? Now, I've not read the manual at all. So, uh, you'll have to bear with me while I find my way around this. Um, SLB. SLB V2, I guess that'll be it there. Yeah, there we go. Install. Okay. Uh, all of this. Let's read the configuration of the drive. That's probably the safest way of doing it, actually. Okay, accept changes. Edit partitions and file systems, so we'll add a partition. 
Now, what I generally do is have a DH0 as my um, system disk and then have DH1 with all my, uh, all my basically, documents and data and everything on. So we'll select the file system. This is quite familiar from uh, Amiga OS 3.1. So I think if we go with um, SFS, that's the, uh, the Amiga's SFS file system, we'll go with that one, um, which is a bit more reliable than the standard file system. So we'll shove that down to... Uh, yeah, it tells you how big it is there, 77 gigabytes. Well, this is a 160 drive, so I might put DH0. Uh, we're getting 148, so I might make that around 60 gigabytes. Uh, I'll make that bootable, and then we'll add another partition in that space there. Change that to SFS as well. And, uh, yeah, that is 88, so you know, it's a nice split down the middle, a little bit more data for my... Uh, a little bit more space for my data files there on DH0. So that should be all I need, I think. I know you can set up some swap memory, actually, if I remember correctly, in OS4. So I might make that a bit smaller. And then uh, add a partition in there. Three gigabytes. See, that should be, you know, more than enough for virtual memory. So uh, how do you do that again? Swap, there you go. So I think that's all there is to it. Accept changes, save to disk, okay, close that. Uh, the machine needs a reboot for the changes to take effect, so we'll do that now. So I've done a quick edit there while the machine reboots and uh, wouldn't try and get it installed on that hard disk now. Although unfortunately, um, even though my mouse appears to be active, the system appears to have locked up on that reboot. Which is a bit annoying. I was hoping that doing a fresh install on a different disk might fix that. So, looks like we'll have to give it a cold shutdown. I did mention this machine is pretty glitchy. And hopefully second time looking it will work. Right, so I've done a hard reboot of the machine and luckily the, uh, the mouse point has come back to life. So we can continue with the install now. So the hard disk should be prepped from uh, the last step that I did. If we click on start the installation... Uh, what have we got here? Location, United States, keyboard layout, American. Do you want to change that? We will change that quickly now. May as well set it up before we do the install. So we've got the locale preferences here. I can pick uh, United Kingdom or Great Britain, which does vary from installer to installer. There we go, British English. We'll use that one. Uh, country, United Kingdom, time zone, uh, yeah, UTC. Okay, use. Uh, we made the mouse a bit quicker actually with that. Uh, we'll change the... I'm going to leave the keyboard on American actually because I've got a Mac keyboard that does have the, the quotation marks near the enter key, like on American keyboards. Unless there is a Mac option here. Let's have a quick look. No, unfortunately not, so... Uh, yeah, I think we'll stick with um, American for now. We can always change it later. Now hopefully I can run the installer and then swap over to the capture card and show you the new workbench. Uh, we've got a little uh, bit of information here. Some of the materials present on this CD, yada yada yada. Click next. Um, everybody reads these obviously, yeah? Eulers. Um, important. Stating with this release, the JX file system due to technical issues is not supported and is now obsolete. Uh, see, that's quite interesting. I do remember at one time the um, JXFS was basically the uh, the recommended operating system for Amiga OS 4.1, but it seems that, you know, they've dropped support of that now. Luckily, I'm using SFS anyway, so we can ignore that. Uh, there is no upgrade option in Final Edition. We need 600 megabytes. Yeah, we've got plenty of room for that. Install. Next. Basically recaps all of the options that I've picked. Uh, so we have got, yeah, we have got a swap partition. I think that's all correct. Um, needs to be installed onto an empty partition, which uh, we should have. Um, we've Okay, we need to format the disks beforehand by the looks of it, so I can click that quickly. So yeah, we'll install that on a DH0, um, and we'll call that... I have a pretty standard um, naming system for my Amiga OS machines. We'll call that System. No trash can. Format. 
Oh, and for some reason the USB is kind of spazzed out a bit there. <laughs> uh, but hopefully that has, yeah, a system that's worked and we'll do this one as work. Still get the option there for the trash can in this day and age. I don't think I've ever put a trash can on any of my Amiga-like systems since, what, about like 1992? So we should be good to go now. If I click Next, um, install onto DH0, uh, I can pick a monitor resolution. So uh, this is a bit now where hopefully I can swap over to my capture card. Um, we'll stick with the... Oh, you can actually pick between the OS 4.1 or the uh, classic Amiga OS 4.0 look. So we'll stick with 4.1 for now, and then we shall install. Congratulations on choosing to install Amiga OS 4.1 Final Edition. There have been lots of improvements since the last release, so what's new? So it looks like we're going to get a little slideshow at the top here while the OS installs. And if I remember from the last time I did this, which admittedly was like a few years ago, it only takes a minute or two, um, improvements in all areas, better support for popular file systems like NetFS, a new app directory, overlay file system, and much more. So, yeah, we're just getting a few of the new uh, Workbench features, but rather than reading them out to you, I think I'll uh, let this installer finish up, and then we will do a reboot, and hopefully I can get you on the capture card and give you a little look at what's new. And here is the first boot of Amiga OS 4.1 Final Edition. Now, as you can see here, we've got the uh, stock OS 4 Workbench screen, and uh, we get this little pop-up window that appears on the, the initial boot to allow you to review or change any of the settings that you made during the installation process. Uh, stuff like screen mode settings. As you can see, we've got this in uh, 1920 by 1080 at the moment. Looking very nice on my 27-inch display here. Uh, sound card configuration. We'll set up the network, actually. Uh, now, you do get this rather useful little internet connection wizard. Usually, when I configure machines, I like to set stuff like static IP addresses and all that, but because we're doing, you know, a demo for this video here, uh, we'll do it pretty quickly and just fly through and use the automatic settings. I can always change it later on. Now I'm using the uh, onboard Ethernet from my A1XE, which I th think is probably about the only onboard component that works reliably on this machine. So uh, yeah, judging by that, we should have um, internet access enabled now. Now also, OS 4.1 Final Edition comes with a bunch of programs, uh, extras, if you want to call them the, you know, traditional Amiga name, uh, that you can choose to install. These are optional installs, and there is some, you know, kind of useful stuff on here, like um, AISS, that's a toolbar program that third-party programs can use. So we're just going to go through and uh, install all of them by clicking the boxes next to them here. And I'll talk you through a few of the uh, things that it installs quickly. Um, there's stuff like, you know, directory opus, which uh, any Amiga user back in the day will know. And as you can see here in the bottom corner, we've had a little pop-up here telling me that the extras installer is currently running. Now, this system here is a system-wide pop-ups uh, program. I think it's called Ringio. <laughs> I'm sure you pronounce it. It's in here, I think. Yeah, there we go. Ringio or Ringio server. Now, this is bundled with 4.1, and uh, third-party programs can give you on-screen pop-ups, which, you know, is kind of handy for stuff like music players. It tells you when it's changing to the next track and uh, when updates and things happen. And you can see here I've opened the uh, system disk, and if you used an Amiga back in the old days, you'll recognize all of the standard Amiga directory layouts. We've got the uh, system drawer there. Uh, utilities still exists. Uh, devs, where you keep you know stuff like your data types and your mount lists and things like that. They all live in there. Uh, the old Amiga installer doesn't look much different these days. So what we're doing here is installing all of the uh, third-party additions from the, the CD-ROM. And if you look here in the dock, now this dock here is bundled with OS4. It's called AmiDock. And you can see it's been populated with all these extra programs that we're installing now. So they pop up in these little menus at the bottom there. We can maximize and minimize those. Uh, yeah, they're still installing there, so we'll leave that go in a moment. And you may notice one thing there, actually, when I opened Utilities, there are some icons that overlay other icons. Now, the reason for this is OS 4.1 still uses the old-school Amiga Workbench. Love it or hate it, it still works pretty much the same as it did, you know, back in the early 90s when OS 3 first came out. So that means stuff like icons don't auto-arrange. You have to actually set their locations in the window. Now you can do it by going to the uh, the menus which you know look very familiar, not a lot different about these, and going to clean up by either column name, date size, so we'll do name, and that will arrange them in alphabetical order. Uh, let's quickly press OK on these. 
Okay. Uh, now, what you have to do then for it to remember the location of all the icons is go to the snapshot window and all menu. Now, next time we open that, it will, or it should remember where everything was. <laughs> Maybe install something else, then we'll try again. Clean up by name. And we'll do that again. Snapshot, window, all. Now, if we close that and open it, yeah, it's remembered where everything is now. So, you know, that is one thing about Amiga OS 4.1. It still runs Workbench, which uh, in other next generation Amiga like OSs, stuff like Morph OS, um, which runs Ambient and Aeros, which runs Wanderer, their aim has kind of been to enhance and rethink the user interface and uh, make it a lot more modern. However, OS 4.1. You know, advantages and disadvantages, it does retain the legacy Amiga Workbench, which I know a lot of OS4 users lo love it for that reason, but some people who maybe don't have an Amiga background will find it very old-fashioned. So we've got a few of those uh, third-party editions installed now. Um, we can close this window here. This will only appear on the first boot. Uh, if we look down here on the on the dock, we've got stuff like Notepad that's included, pretty nice text editor, uh, multi-view that's been there, you know, since the old days that displays, you know, pretty much anything you've got a data type file for. So if we go in here, data types are these here. So what they are is little plugins to the OS that allow programs to read different file formats, like we've got one here for JPEG files, one for our WAV files, PNG. So in theory, any programs that take advantage of data types can load any kind of file. So if I was to drag in a PNG file into MultiView, unless I had that, it wouldn't load it. But then, like, you know, I can add a third-party uh, PNG data type that I can download from the internet. Then magically, MultiView will load PNG files. So that's the way that works. Uh, the shell has had a bit of an overall in... 4.1 Final Edition. Now, before I was using something called King Con, which was a shell replacement. Now, though, we do get a tabbed shell, as you can see, and it's got stuff like menus. You know, this has been around, uh, you know, a good decade in the waiting, actually getting an upgraded console for OS 4.1. And I think, theoretically, if I type new shell, it should open in a new tab, I assume. <laughs> or maybe not. Actually, yeah, we've got a, an old non-tabbed shell appear there, so I'm not exactly sure how we open a new tab there. May have to come back to that one, but you know, there you go, that's it, a bit of an overall. Uh, we've got AMI FT, yeah, it's a PDF reader there. Some of the extras that we installed just then, uh, we have, you know, Directory Opus, which I mentioned, is the uh, old school famous Amiga file manager. Um, it's been, you know, upgraded for PowerPC, works great on OS4, so we'll quit that. Uh, that was a very famous Amiga program back then. Uh, disk Image GUI, that's quite handy. Now what this is, is it allows you to mount virtual disk images. It supports ADF files, Amiga disk format, uh, ISOs for CD-ROM images, and also uh, DMS files, which are compressed Amiga disk files. So that means you know you, you can basically mount floppy disk images that you download from the internet uh, on the Amiga OS 4.1 workbench. Uh, we have Ranger, that's a little system information program, has a DVD burner included too. And if we go into internet here, uh, there are a few useful internet additions actually. Uh, we've got a couple of FTP clients, AMI FTP, which is quite basic actually. Uh, more fully featured is PFTP, uh, which requires SSH by the looks of it now. I did mention this is a stock install, so none of these programs have been configured yet, so we'll exit out of that quickly. Uh, as a remote desktop viewer, so we could connect to you know Windows client with that, for example. And there is a couple of web browsers included now. <laughs> I do think it's a bit dumb that they still include iBrowse. This is a really old web browser. And it's actually an old uh, 68k Amiga app. Now, as you can see, the dates on it, 2001 to 06. Uh, however, the engine of this web browser is really from 1995 to 2001. If you went on a, an old school Amiga website like, uh, we'll try that one there. See, they display fine, but this is a website from, well, 2003 was its last update. I think it was made, yeah, 1996. So stuff like that displays fine. And Amiga World, that's another non-CSS uh, retro looking Amiga website. The problem comes when you want to use anything that's, you know, a bit more advanced and has a... Uh, a more modern engine so yeah we try here Hyperion's website for example you're seeing here the uh, the CSS has not been displayed it looks really ugly and stuff like uh, you know JavaScript and that kind of thing is never gonna really work in this because it's so outdated uh, even like Amiga Raw's org as you can see you know it's 
not displaying half the colors properly, all the CSS elements haven't loaded. And I think last time I tried to load Google in this, it actually locked up the web browser. So I do think, you know, it's, it's not really a great idea that they still include eyebrows. I'm not really sure why they do, really. There is a more modern WebKit-based browser included um, called OWB. Now, I say more modern. However, the last update that this had was five years ago in 2010. And uh, I do remember the, the guy that worked on this said it was really just a a proof of concept CSS web browser for OS 4 really and it's been abandoned for about five years now as you can see because it's based on WebKit it will display you know modern websites just fine uh, however it doesn't have things like a download manager and as I mentioned it's been abandoned there is a much more modern and fully featured web browser available for OS 4 which is called um, Odyssey web browser now that's actually based on it's a port of the standard web browser that comes included with Morph OS, which is probably the reason that it's not included with um, OS 4.1 Final Edition. So uh, I'd imagine that pretty much every OS 4 user is on Odyssey these days. But, you know, they do bundle OWB, so you can get online and, uh, you know, upgrade your web browser to something a bit more modern, kind of like Microsoft do with Internet Explorer. Everyone uses it to download Chrome or Firefox and then never uses it again. Uh, in Players here, we have uh, TuneNet, which is actually a bit of a killer app for OS 4, actually. Now, this is a very fully featured music program. It can do stuff like, you know, shoutcast streams. It can also play, you know, MP3s and WAV files and anything you've got data types for. But also it supports classic Amiga formats like uh, uh, mod files. So, you know, it's a pretty pretty decent music player and actually one of the, the OS4 programs I've really missed using. So it'll be nice to try out TuneNet again. And I think at the time of recording this, it's just been bought by Aeon, who are actually giving it an update. Uh, we've also got DV Player, which is a movie player so that can play you know mp4s and avis and that kind of thing and we've got running uae here now a moment ago you could see that i was installing um this from the extras um installer now what it is is one of the most common questions that i get asked about os4 and morph os when i'm doing videos on them is will it run my classic amiga programs now out of the box os4 does include just in time 68k emulation so that means you know classic programs for example like eyebrows I showed you a moment ago, will work just fine on OS 4.1 out of the box. However, it will not run your classic Amiga games by default. The reason for it is it emulates the 68K processor and also it's got a lot of the old Amiga 3.1 APIs. However, it does not emulate the classic Amiga chipset. So if you get a program that tries to basically bang the metal, as it were, um, it will crash the system. So luckily it does come included with the um, classic Amiga UAE install um, or set up for you out of the box. So if we click on emulation here, um, as you can see, we've got Amiga ROMs and we do have the Amiga 500 1.3 ROM, the 1200 3.1. There's a CD32 uh, Kickstart ROM in there as well. So what you can do is literally click it from the dock down here. And then if you click a 68K program, for example, I'll try eyebrows again now. It will tell me there. It's a 68K program. Do you want to run it in UAE? Or if I click no, it will load it natively. Uh, and I can show you, actually, I think there is a an install of Amiga Workbench yeah, 3.1 included with OS 4. So you can see here we've got the old school Amiga icons. Now, if I launch, for example, the clock from OS 3, this is a 68K Amiga executable. So we'll double click that. It will ask me, do you want to run it in UAE? I'll say no. As you can see, it will work fine on OS 4 as it is. And even stuff like, you know, going back to uh, Mimax, that's one of the earliest bundled Amiga programs. Uh, oh, which didn't work, actually, interestingly. Okay. Although I think it does actually still come included with OS4. Yeah, there we go. That's from, like, what, 1985 or something? So there you go. That's been a little overview of OS 4.1 Final Edition um, stock as it comes just, you know, the standard install of it. What I'm going to do now, though, is spend a couple of hours getting it reconfigured and getting all my programs and data reinstalled onto the system and, uh, you know, getting a nice custom workbench backdrop and a few extra things installed. So what I'll do is I'll pause this video and we'll come back in a couple of hours and I'll show you how I've got on.
That's better. Right, I've spent a couple of hours installing all of my data uh, back onto my A1XE and give it you know, a bit of customization. Uh, changed the, the backdrop there to a nice picture. Uh, added a second dock here um, with some of my third-party programs installed. And as you can see, the dock along the bottom is um, much more populated than it was before. Now, if I go into uh, the System 4.1 disk here, you can see that stuff like you know utilities is... Uh, Pack now. I've got lots of third-party apps in here, and uh, also restored a few of the Amiga classics. Like Say is in here, which still works in OS4. Lovely. I think that was one of the first ever Amiga programs I used, uh, and even stuff like uh, old hacks, like you know Cyber Lemmings. I think still work in here. As you can see, some little lemmings will come down then and land on Windows. Uh, now, if we open the Exchange thing here, we should be able to kill them, I think. Uh, or maybe not. <laughs> How do we get rid of them then? Click it again. There we go. Stops. So uh, I can show you around a few of the um, different tools I've got installed here. Now there's GoldEd, which is a quite a nice fully featured text editor. Very good for coding that, actually. Uh, Wordworth, which is a legacy Amiga program. I used to use this all the time when I was at college uh, back in the late 90s. It's, you know, a pretty nice office suite for the Amiga. Quite outdated by today's standards, as is the entire operating system, but... Uh, you know, it works flawlessly under 4.1. Uh, we've got TuneNet, as I showed before. Now it should have a few of my radio streams in there. Uh, Amipodder, which is one of my favorite podcast uh, capture clients. Now, I use this for downloading podcasts, you know, audio podcasts that I listen to, like the Laporte's Twit Network, you know, it gets these off RSS feeds. It's really lightweight. Just double-click on the podcast you want, then it will download, and you can play it in whatever you like. Uh, we've also got a video player, mPlayer, that I think is actually a Linux port. Uh, I can show you quickly. So if we... I don't know, we'll press... Uh, assuming it's not going to be affected by copyright, hopefully. Um, what have we got here? So an Amiga Tutor video. We'll just click that and see what happens. I think this is an old uh, Amiga format. Fast forward a bit. How cheesy is that look? See, I won't play it in full screen because my uh, capture card will spaz out. Uh, down the bottom here, we've got a few uh, extra things installed. Snoopy, that's a system, uh, basically a snooper. It looks at what programs are doing on the on the OS. So, although it's not getting too in-depth here, maybe I need to reinstall that properly. Oh, no, there we go. It shows you basically what everything's doing. So that's quite useful if uh, a program fails to launch and you want to find out, you know, if there's a library missing or a resource that it's not finding. This will tell you exactly... Um, which part of the systems are being accessed and what programs are looking for. So, you know, that's quite handy. Uh, and also we've got the um, Odyssey web browser opened up here that I mentioned. Now, I've actually got a couple of tabs open in here because I know inevitably one of the questions that I will get asked in this video in the comments section is, what kind of hardware do I need to run OS for? Now, uh, <laughs> there are only a couple of boards, really. And unfortunately, OS 4 is PowerPC. And no, you cannot install it on a PowerPC Mac. Uh, you can with Morph OS, uh, which is kind of the main rival to Amiga OS 4. However, you do need a custom board. Currently, they're made by two companies. You've got 8Cube Systems and Aeon as well. Now, the pricing on these... I imagine a few jewels are going to drop now. Now, the flagship machine in the Amiga One range at the moment, uh, which you can buy from Amiga Kit's website, is the Amiga One X1000. And as you can see, just for a uh, machine, it costs you $2,744.79. So, uh, yeah, I mean, OS4 does have a bit of a reputation as being a bit of a closed rich boys fan club. So this is kind of the top of the range system at the moment, although they are replacing this with uh, the Amiga One X5000 very soon, which will use a different CPU. Why is it so expensive? Well, the problem comes with the um, the philosophy of OS4, really. It wants to use custom closed design hardware, and it's for a very small niche audience, and they're making this hardware themselves. And doing limited production runs is obviously very expensive, and on this they're actually using a... PowerPC, I think it's the uh, the PA60 Semi, I think it's called. It's basically the the CPU that was intended for Apple to use before they dropped PowerPC uh, by PA Semi that Apple actually own now. And they do a limited run for military use and uh, Aeon, who developed the board, actually buy them off Apple, but they're very expensive. I think they're paying about you know 600 euros just for the CPU itself. So, yeah, there's a bit of information on the upcoming Amiga One X5000. There is no pricing on this yet, but to be honest, I wouldn't expect it to be 
much cheaper. You're still going to be talking around two grand, I think, for that. Uh, there are some cheaper systems available from a company called A-Cube. If we go in hardware here, uh, they have the SAM 460 and the 440. Now, they do actually sell a pre-configured system called the Amiga 1 500, which comes in this pretty ugly briefcase-like case. Although inside the hardware is pretty decent for, you know, an Amiga 1 machine. It's basically co comparable to what I've got that I'm running this, you know, demo on. My Amiga 1 XE is uh, kind of an older, a lot older version of this, but it's, uh, you know, performance-wise, it's pretty similar. You're probably talking, there's no pricing on here, but I think it's around 800 British pounds, maybe about 1,000 euros for it. So, again, you know, they're aiming at a very small niche audience, and unfortunately... There's not really a very cheap way of running the uh, the main PowerPC version of OS 4. I mean, you could buy one of the old iTech boards like I run my system on. I probably wouldn't advise it too much because, you know, they're very old and they're very buggy now and uh, they were really meant to be evaluation boards. Uh, there is a cheaper board that A-Cube made called the, uh, the SAM 460, but I think that only runs at... It's only around like 600 megahertz, so you're not going to get great performance off that. So, uh, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but um, I will actually show you the classic version of... 4.1 in a future video that runs on um, UAE emulation. Obviously, it's not as fully featured as this, but... And if I click in here, we've got an IRC client open. Now, this one's called WookieChat. It's uh, probably my favourite IRC client on any platform. You know, it allows you to connect to multiple servers really simply. I'm in Twit Live here. It shows, you know, all the user modes and everything. I spend a lot of time in IRC. I often have it open in the background just to, if I've got a question or I want to get an opinion on something, it's quite handy. Um, what else have we got in here? Now, Ami Store. I thought this was quite interesting. Ami Store is now kind of the de facto way of getting Amiga OS 4 software. Although, curiously, it didn't come bundled with 4.1 Final Edition. I had to basically Google the website and hunt it down myself, which is a bit of a bizarre omission. I think, you know, Aeon actually, they make the hardware and everything and they sell the bundles. It's a bit bizarre why it's not included in the OS out of the box. Uh, but Ami Store basically allows you to uh, download software for your OS4 machine. There are some free stuff on here, but there are also um, some programs that are now paid for. Um, it's the first time I've ever, ever launched this, so I'm kind of just having a little look around it. I haven't set an account up yet, so let's see what's on here. There's not a lot on it so far by the looks of it, but it hasn't been launched for that long. It's only been around about six to eight months, I think. So you've got a few games here as well. Um, I think most stuff on here is actually paid for. Um, yes, expands 50, that is. You know, which I haven't really got a problem with, but I think they do actually charge for some drivers for the uh, higher-end Amiga 1 machines now. Like, uh, yeah, these the graphics card drivers for the Amiga 1 X1000 are £40, which you know, is a little bit steep maybe, but... Um, the X1000 guys don't seem to have a problem paying that, so, you know, who am I to judge? So, yeah, Amy Store is kind of the de facto way of getting OS 4 software now. And there's also a system called AMI Update that comes bundled with OS 4.1. This lets you uh, update your machine and make sure that all your hardware um, has got the latest drivers and your you know system components are all up to date. And it also sends down operating system updates via this too. Um, I probably need to make an account on Hyperion's website to get the OS updates, but as you can see, there are you know a few things available already, even though I've only installed Final Edition. So yeah, I mean, that's really a look at Amiga OS 4.1. I don't want to go too in-depth in this video. I have gone uh, a bit further into it in previous vids, if you want to have a look back in my history. Uh, you know, on this machine, even though I mentioned I've had stability issues in the past, it does seem to be running all right. Um, I mean, I can show you a few of the third-party apps. Pro Trekker, that is a, uh, an old-school Amiga mod player, uh, or a tracker, if you like. You can make, you know, old-school chip mods in here. So I probably have got a few on the disc. Um... Magic Pockets, that's a classic. Based on Betty Boo, if I remember correctly. So who is OS 4.1 for, uh, for then, really? Who are they targeting? Well, really, it's hardcore Amiga fans, you know, from back in the day. People that love the Amiga operating system, um, have got the money, who are willing to pay the very high prices for uh, the hardware that you you need to buy to run this operating system on. And there may be people who are interested in alternative operating systems as well, but really I think they're targeting the you know the very few hardcore Amiga fans who want to run their favourite operating system environment in a more modern context. Now, as you can see from everything I've demoed in this, even down to the fact that you know Windows <laughs> don't auto arrange, you know you open icons, it can be messy. You've got to go to the menus and uh, you know 
clean them up and then snapshot them manually like you had to back in the early 90s on the Amiga. Things are very old school on this, and I think for a lot of Amiga 1 fans and OS 4 fans, that's kind of the appeal of OS 4.1, that it does things the way that they've always known, really. So, uh, you know, there is a quite warm, nostalgic feel to using OS 4.1. You know, it, it takes me back to my youth, really. You know, I'm using the Amiga's workbench again, and a lot of my old school programs work. You know, I open Wordworth, I can load up the uh, the documents I made when I was... 14 years old when I was at school and college and uh, it really is an exercise in nostalgia really and it's a break from the everyday slog of using modern day operating systems and all the headaches that come with them and the big overheads and everything it's a bit of escapism really so that's the main reason I use it it's you know a bit of nostalgia and just a bit of fun really so I'm kind of glad that I installed Final Edition um, it looks a bit more stable than the machine was before you know I've been demoing this now for a good half an hour or so and we haven't had any system lockups yet apart from you know a little crash with eyebrows earlier so i keep the machine set up and hopefully i can continue to use it and uh, get some enjoyment out of the machine again so that's been a look at final edition at os 4.1 if you've got any questions of course please feel free to leave them in the video i'll include a few interesting links as well if you want to find out more uh, add us on facebook we've got a new facebook group now which is facebook.com forward slash kookytech.net. You can follow me on Twitter at danwood underscore UK and I will see you in the next video.